Thank you for watching. You're looking at my computer screen because I'm going to show you how to make something in Easel. Uh, Easel is the program that you get with uh, the X-Carve. If you're wondering what the X-Carve is, got a few videos about it. I just want to make a really quick video show you how I make uh, a part for my Yeti Double XL. So here we go. Now, as I have no idea how all that fancy uh, screen grab software works, I'll just try to show you like this. This is what I'm going to cut in uh, my first drawing. And then over here, uh, this is what I'm going to cut in my second drawing. I hope that uh, appears on your screen quite well. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to cut out some logos. I made a test run on this already uh, in cardboard. Cardboard is perfect for making uh, tests. This is uh, again a pizza box. Uh, what I did is I set my material to uh, aluminium. This is not aluminium, I'm going to machine it from uh, carbon, but uh, I set it uh, to aluminium but just because those pass rates, they're really good. The, the feed rate is low, the depth per pass is really low, and I just want to show you how easy it is to actually go ahead and carve something on this machine, because it's a piece of cake. A crucial part, especially if you combine multiple drawings like I'm doing right now, is that uh, you keep an eye on your, uh, well I call it a zero point, I'm not sure what it's uh, really called. That's this black dot over here which uh, kind of mimics, I'm still bad at muting my shit by the way. This <laughs> mimics the, uh, the co left corner of your material. Uh, as you can tell over here I already cut a few braces from this so I'm going to make the machine think that the left corner of my material is over here. Uh, with my pizza box cardboard I can then check. Uh, that it will actually fit eventually. So that's what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to lower the drill bit. I'm going to do that manually. You can also do that uh, automatically in uh, easel. And uh, then I'm going to confirm the home position. I will take you through it. Okay, I know that the machine is uh, set up. I'm currently sitting behind it uh, because I need to put my laptop right over here where I always sit. So I can right now I can go to uh, carve. You see the green button over here. Well, let me focus on that. Carve. Really easy as that. Run the homing cycle. I do not want to do that, so I'm going to uh, unlock without homing. Measure the material. Uh, material is secure. It is. I actually put some uh, double stick tape on there, so yes, go ahead. Uh, choose a bit. I made it think that. It is a 0.7 millimeter bit size. It's actually 0.8, but otherwise it won't cut the complete design in the logo. So I'm just going to go ahead and confirm this. I'm also going to confirm the home position because I already uh, nailed out the machine. It's really easy as that. Raise the bit. This is where I turn on the machine. Excuse the mess, by the way. Now, look what will happen over here. If I raise the bit, See that right now the bit tip is indeed loose from the material. Then I'm going to turn my spindle on. I did it over here. Spindle is on. Start carving. Just so you know that I am not shipping you. I am machining a part. Right over there is a moose. Did you see it? That's not a horse, that's a moose. And for me, I'm from Holland. This is the second time I have seen a moose over here. See if I can get you even a tiny bit closer. It would be something if I got like killed by a moose. Holy fuck, he's moving. Yeah, look at him. That is beautiful. That is so cool. Let's see if I can get a tiny bit closer because he moves away slightly. If, if you hear like a worried wife in the background, I'm always doing this when I see animals. Well, that was a moose. Um, 
to the CNC machine. I'm pretty sure that it made a lot of dust now. Then I need to vacuum away. That's so cool about Norway. You you get interrupted by shit like this, and you just find yourself outside with your camera all of a sudden. <laughs> Does not happen in Amsterdam. <laughs> okay, so far so good. I carved out uh, part one, which is uh, the logo says Axial Yeti Double XL Hemi Storm. Uh, just an example. I know it looks kind of messy right now. That's just uh, the the protective film that is on the carbon. Uh, this carbon, by the way, comes with the protective film on uh, both uh, sides, just so you don't scratch it up completely before you're done with your project. Okay, I'm ready to carve stage two. This is the outline that I'm going to carve for that uh, top brace. You can you can adjust everything you see in here. Uh, this is very much a straightforward program. Uh, this is just your shed where your project uh, sits uh, in regards to your mill line, uh, your cut depth, all that stuff. Okay, then we're going to head a, go ahead and carve, measure the material. I'm going to cheat tap on a tiny bit just because I don't want it to cut any tabs. I'm going to confirm that my material is secure. I use some double sided tape to glue it to the table. For now, that uh, works pretty well. I'm going to go ahead, cross that one off. Diameter of my bit is 0.8 millimeters. I'm going to confirm that. Now I need to confirm the home position. So by pressing these buttons, I can put it exactly where I want to have it. So I'm just going to lower the bit so it only just touches my material. That's that. Confirming the home position. Raising the bit. Raise the bit on the machine. And then I'm going to turn the spindle on. Confirm that and I'm going to start carving. And it's all done. Uh, the cool thing is with carbon, there's so much muck coming from it that it basically keeps everything in place. So you do not have to cut it with uh, tabs. If you're familiar with uh, X-Carve, you will know what I mean. Uh, it basically asks you the thickness of your material to confirm it. And then if you cut the entire depth of your material, it will cut all these tabs that you afterwards need to cut off. I want to have like a super clean cut all around. So I decided to cut this by cheating a tiny bit and uh, making the machine think that the material is thicker than it actually is so it avoids cutting all those uh, tabs. Uh, let me zoom out just so you can see how this works. Now I'm going to uh, turn the X-carve off like that. That way there's no resistance on the motors and I can just push all of this back. Now this carbon dust, this is pretty freaking dangerous but what I'm going to do first just to avoid that I'm going to vacuum up any stuff that I need is I'm going to sort of peel this out then I'm going to go to my kitchen hold it under the tap, completely rinse it off then afterwards I'm going to vacuum this. Pretty cool, huh? Well, there you see it, the piece that I just machined with my X-Carve, the backbone for my uh, Yeti Double XL, twin castle power. It's going to be absolutely mental. It uh, needs all the bracing that it can get, I think. And uh, this part is, uh, apart from, I think, uh, looking pretty cool, also crucial in keeping things together. I hope this sort of shows how easy it is to work with uh, the X-Carve. Go check it out at uh, inventables.com. I'm not getting paid to, to say kind stuff about the product, but it is just really awesome. We'll also allow me to do a whole lot of uh, a completely scratch built custom 
uh, RC projects in the future. So I expect to see a lot more from this machine because I really enjoy working with it. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, uh, hit the like button. If you have any questions, comments, uh, whatsoever, I'll leave them in the box below. If you want to be ahead of what I'm doing over here on uh, YouTube, go check out uh, the description box. Whole lot of info over there also about uh, the Axial Yeti XL. Uh, about the castle products that I got uh, in here and of course about uh, the X-Carve by Inventables. Thank you so much for watching. If you haven't subscribed yet and you want to see how this car uh, eventually will turn out, hit that uh, subscribe button. I hope to see you around. Bye-bye.